Hi everyone, it's Joe here from Lawn Solutions Australia and welcome to this episode of Turf Talk where I'm joined by the the recently retired Open Spaces Manager of Shell Harbour City Council being Scott Rowe. Scott, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How's it feel being recently retired? I wouldn't call it retired, but it'd be (laughs) nice to think it was retired. How long is your retirement? Two weeks? (laughs) Two weeks. Two weeks, yes. Shorter than most, longer than most. Um, So... You're at the council for a long, long time. Um, tell us a little bit about how long you were there for, what your role was, um, what kind of work you're responsible for at Shell Harbour City Council. Yeah, so I was fortunate to get an apprenticeship there back in the early 90s where I studied horticulture. I did five years and got really itchy feet as I was studying a diploma and wanted to get out in the real world and mm-hmm. have a crack at some of the stuff I was learning. And so I did my second apprenticeship out in the real world. Yep. And then um, five years after that of contracting, I came back to council as a tree management officer and then progressed to open spaces manager where I ended up being um, back at council for 23 years. Wow. So how long all up then? So 28 28 years all up plus some contracting back to them in between. Yep. And and, and for those that don't know, tell the people a little bit about Shell Harbour City Council, what kind of area it is, how many people it's responsible for if you know that. yeah, so it, it spans from um, Lake Illawarra south to Minamara and mm-hmm. out west to Yalla Bridge and to the base of the escarpment. Yep. Um, in my team, we had 85 full-time staff with mm-hmm. casuals on top of that. Yep. We looked after 80-odd sports fields, mm-hmm. a nursery, um, all our open spaces and bushland areas uh, and all our mowing and um, medium strips and anything green, basically, in the yep. city we were – we look after and you would have seen over time i just know because it's it's the area just to the north of us here and the expansion through i guess flinders and black butt and the housing through there over the last two decades you would have seen a quite a bit of change in your time yeah i think uh, i'm not exactly sure but i think it, the population has grown by like thirty thousand people in the time yeah that I've been in the role so yeah yeah mass- massive expansion um i think um it's been one of the la- uh, one of the quickest growing local government areas in the state um, yeah. for for a while as yeah. well. I'm not surprised. The people there through that area now is just ridiculous, and the pressure that adds to sports fields and green up in space. I imagine that'd be a, a difficult part of your job. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, it was it was a challenging and rewarding part. So um, particularly sports fields where the community. Um, we wanted to get out and, and exercise and, and mm-hmm. play a lot more sport, um, a lot more female participation as well as junior participation in all sorts of sports. So um, it was great to see, but with that was the challenge of um, providing better surfaces and um, better better playing environments um, with greater expectations. I think a point you just touched on there is important. It's one we a lot of people don't probably really understand is the growth of female sport participation has just been particularly with things like AFL uh, mm. league tag even tackle rugby league I know I know now in, in in our local sporting competition here the ladies started competing in 2010 and I think now there's 30 something senior teams and over 50 junior teams so training extra games how do you manage that from a council perspective all that extra participation it's a, it's a massive task for a whole heap of different areas from asset management to um, forward planning. Um, there's a lot of work goes into f- forward planning as well mm-hmm. and, and trying to um, navigate what it's going to look like in five years' time so that you can plan ahead as well. Yeah. So um, for us, we were just part of a big collaboration. So Open Spaces was a big collaboration with all mm-hmm. sorts of other um, technical staff within council to to be looking forward and, tr- and trying to keep it in front of the, front of the game. Well, I think he's did a pretty good job of it um, because I know Shell Harbour City Council is is known for having good facilities and good services yeah. and that sort of stuff. So it's a, obviously a, a credit to you and your team. But I want you to explain or address the uh, the elephant in the room, I guess you'd say. So for those listening and not in fact watching, uh, the crown that we're referring to is a stainless steel I guess you'd say an eight-inch diameter crown mounted on a stainless steel post, uh, and it's got long zoysia grass growing out the top of the crown, almost like the hair. And on the front, it says Scotty, being Scott Rowe, King Zoysia. Uh, so it's a pretty cool thing. But you'll hear me referring to the crown, and that's exactly what I'm talking about because uh, it's going to sound a bit weird if you're not actually watching. Now, <laughs> recently retired. So when was that? On uh, first of April. First of April, 24. So so very very recently retired. Mm. Now, talk me through. The Scotty King's Oysia crown and the shirt. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> um, 
So I, I came down to a turf co um, farm day, um, be three and a half years ago now, yeah. um, and walked outside as part of the tour and got introduced to Zoysia. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been known for saying um, since that day that um, the new love of my life. Um, <laughs> It doesn't, doesn't compete with my wife, but um, <laughs> the new love of my life is always here. Um, I saw it in its um, moan and unmoan state mm-hmm. and um, just fell in love with it, um, just love the architectural look of it. Mm-hmm. And and um, some I, I could see benefits in, in a local government setting, in a, in a public setting yep. that weren't being talked about yeah. on that tour. Like we, we were looking at it as a – as a sports turf, mainly golf, mm-hmm. and would be explained to us how, how it worked mm-hmm. in a golf setting, and and I just looked at it and went, oh, this is this is more than golf. This this is just amazing yeah. um, as a plant for um, for the local government setting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I came back and um, got all excited and designed up a roundabout um, in Oak Flats, which is just outside the police station. Yeah. Um, three years this month. Since that was built, is that right? Um, okay. And three years without a mo. Yeah, I was starting to get known for always just talking about zoysia and nothing else. <laughs> okay. um, one track mind that I get. Yeah. Um, so on my leaving, uh, the crew, uh, including our fabricators, um, mocked up this crown for me. Um, so the as ca- a, council as a passing, staff as a did it. Yeah, the council staff actually yeah. built it. Yeah. Uh, and did that for me as a as a parting gift. How yeah, cool. So, yeah, cool. so I've yeah. been told that you walk around town carrying it. Uh, it's a bit, true? it's a bit heavy. Um, I tried, <laughs> but it's it's a bit heavy. So um, it's it's going to have pride of place outside my glass house at, at, at cool. home. Very it's been cool. actually at the front door for the last couple of weeks. Has it with some pretty funny looks? Of yeah. like, What's that about? Let people know who it is. Yeah, no, yeah. really, really stoked. Um, yeah, it was a really nice gift and. Bit of, bit of fun on the back of uh, a lot of hard work that um, the Open Spaces team did introducing Zoysia um, to the community. We'll get into that um, in a little bit more detail in a second, but I've known you for a couple of years now and I've never seen you wear a red flannel. Yeah, yeah what's well. The th- what's the thought process behind this? Well, you know, um, as, as part of my rise to stardom um, <laughs> with Zoysia, um, I was invited back to um, – back to Turf Co for another farm day and spoke alongside <laughs> Jason Hodges. And one of the things I'm really going to miss at council is the banter. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a great team environment there and, and plenty of banter. And um, one of the staff bought me this for Christmas and said, if you're going to keep going down to Turf Co and doing these talks, you, you better look the part. So <laughs> um, here I am. <laughs> so um, we'll get more into Zoysia and how it's changed, I guess, the the, the landscape excuse the part of, of, of Shaw Harbour City Council, but where are you heading next? So I'm off to um, Southern Highlands Christian School to right. be their property and services manager. Mm-hmm. Right. Eh? Mm-hmm. So that's going to be, there's going to be some similarities there between your existing role or is it going to be something totally, totally different? Uh, yeah, simil- similarities yeah. and then a um, bit of a stretch as well. So yeah. um, the similarities will be um, managing their open spaces, which is um, they've got a beautiful little school there. Um mm-hmm. On I think it's seven acres. Yeah. Um, so there's only two sports fields now instead of eighty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, they've got a they've got a great school there and a, a great little community. Uh, and then the stretch for me will be um, doing some master planning of the whole site. Yeah. And um, more scheduling of of building and open space management. Um, yeah. So so, so that that will be that will be a challenge where. I've um, only been part of a collaboration in the past, and I'll be I'll be leading that that part of the work. Another there. twenty-seven years of service coming up. I uh, hope not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as much as I like the look of the new job. Another thing, I guess, uh, that you've shown some interest in with our relationship over the past 10, 12 months is with some propagation type work. So for those that listen to this podcast, you would have heard a few episodes uh, where we spoke to turf scientists and others uh, where we actually import lawn solutions, imports turf grasses into Australia. Mm. And once we import them, we only get a small bit and then we've got to break up and propagate them. So what has sort of piqued your interest about this and what do you see um, in this particular side of the turf industry? Uh, I just um, have always been... Um, amazed at, at at how it starts from such a small um, piece of material that comes mm. into the country to it being hundreds of acres of, of turf mm. and with background in nursery and, and horticulture um, it interests me how you did it and you know 
um, been talking to you about how that looks and yeah. I just think it's an amazing uh, thing to be able to bring to the industry and how, how it starts from from such a small piece of material yeah and yeah and have expressed interest in in being a part of that and yeah and and helping to bring a new new product to market mm -hmm. um in a in a behind the scenes role really yeah. um where yeah it's just using propagation skills to to, to enhance that it's to help, quite help a, it happen it's quite a it's a difficult job in some ways because it is such a a monotonous, finicky, quite thing to do. Mm. But you've got some experience in 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 that role, being uh, with with your Hort background and stuff. So it's going to be a um, exciting little period for you, I guess. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the days of um, pricking out, yeah. as we yeah. as we called it <laughs> yeah. in the in the nursery industry, where you are sitting there and um, dealing at a at, at a micro scale, I guess, yep. um, um, two nodes at a time, mm -hmm. in, in order to generate. Um, and enough material for an industry, yeah. industry wide of, of turf. So it's, pe it's people exciting. don't understand, like Tiff Tough, for example, now, which we'll speak about Tiff Tough a little bit later on because you've got some experience with it. There's 700 and something hectares in production now in Australia, and it all came from a pot about, the, about, size the, size of, of about yeah. the size of King Zoysia Scotty's crown. Yeah. Uh, so there's quite a lot involved. It's going to be cool to see how uh, this progresses, particularly with our, uh, we've spoke to you about uh, our new buffalo grasses um, mm. and propagating them. And you've propagated, you've, sh you've had, you've just dipped your toes into it um, a little bit just recently and you've found out that propagating buffalo can be a little bit more fun than propagating zoysia grass. But we'll, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, um, we'll get into that now. I want to focus on, Zoysia grass, what you've done mm. with zoysia grass, because you've actually done a presentation uh, for Lawn Solutions members at our at our national turf conference in front of 300 turf farmers. And what you showed on that day was a real eye-opener to a lot of people with how we can use natural turf grass in areas that we hadn't used natural turf grass much before. So you touched on briefly your roundabout project. I guess that was kind of the, the pilot project mm. uh, for this in a lot of ways, and it's since grown from there. And if anyone hasn't seen this, you can jump on our Lawn Solutions website. You can pretty much Google Oak Flats Roundabout, and there's a heap of media about it. So you mentioned we've just hit or hitting or just hit the three-year anniversary. Uh, yes. So tell us what no mowing on a public, a busy public road, an area on a busy public road, what that does in terms for savings in cost, labour, um, for a, a, an organisation like Shell Harbour City Council. I think um, even... Beyond the cost savings and the labour is the safety, mm -hmm. so um, it, it does all, all three. So yeah, it it reduced our overall maintenance in the first year by seventy five percent. Wow! Um, so that was hours on the job, not not actual time. Yeah, not actual um, dollars on the job, mm -hmm. and the dollars is an even greater saving again because you're not using traffic control. Yeah, and traffic control is a is an expense. Yeah. Um, beyond just the hours. Yeah. So what it meant for us was we went from a roundabout that had um, agapanthus and dietes and other things in it that needed constant work. It had weeds all through it and it had vision issues for, for public safety for actually being able to see through the roundabout. Yeah. Um, so we removed all that and we mounded up um, an area with um, sand, mm -hmm. uh, a sand profile, and, and sculpted it. And that's the other thing I really liked about Zoysia was the architectural effect yeah, that, it, sure. that it could give. Yeah. So um, we did something a little bit outlandish and had, had all these mounds and um, it was called Teletubby Land for a little <laughs> while. Uh, we were getting all sorts of abuse when we were putting it in about how you're going to mow that yeah. because it um, looked more like the surrounds of a, of a golf green. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what we achieved was um, this month is three years since mowing. Yeah. Uh, so the first twelve months was about a seventy-five percent saving in time. Um, I haven't done the exact figures, but that's probably more up around the 80, 90 percent saving now, which is yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, and the safety aspect of that, where you no longer have staff at a busy intersection where there's multiple players going in all directions mm -hmm. and, and people trying to bend over and do weeding yep. with vehicles really close to them. Yep. Um, traffic control is trying to manage that traffic and, and the safety for them even. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been been a um, huge success. Um, on, on top of all those savings you mentioned, it looks good. Yeah, it looks great. Um, and well, uh, I think it looks great. Yeah, so, so do I. <laughs> might be a little bit biased, but um, we, we think it looks great. And you get at that three-year point now, and I was only there – 
uh, two weeks ago. Do they mow it now? What's no. your thought process there? Just totally leave it? Well, I don't know. Yeah. It won't be my decision anymore. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted that one roundabout to be unmown forever and okay. just to see what it did. Yeah. Uh, so we've now progressed down Central Avenue and, and there's been some new traffic devices put in closer to the CBD. Mm-hmm. Um, they also had Nusoisia put in them yeah. um, and they look fantastic as well. Yeah. Um, they got mowed for the first time um, this year um, and we're, we're trialling, well, we, we um, council are trialling something slightly different there and just keeping them at a set height yeah. um, in what- order for safety as well there. Yeah. Because what they can do, yeah, if, if, if there's people walking across it or walking near it, you can't have the grass too long, obviously, because it's mm-hmm. a, a trip hazard. But they could get away with potentially mowing every couple of months as opposed to... Oh, maybe every three to six months yeah. as opposed to every four to six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be a mm-hmm. huge saving for them. And so the roundabout and the median strips, the visual aspect is great, obviously, through summer, where Zoysi grass is quite green. But we talk to a lot of people about this, about how it can look in its off season, I guess you say when it goes dormant and loses colour through winter when it gets cold. What's your sort of opinion and thinking around that? Because I know you had a really good way of explaining it last time. You don't actually mind the colour. Um, oh, I like it. Yeah. It, it creates a bit of contrast. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, so we – our experience was that the roundabout um, went a coppery colour. Yeah. Um, so it actually changes its look throughout the year mm-hmm. and then the vibrancy of spring is, is a different colour again yeah. and then summer and – and, and also I think with the growth habit of it at different heights at, in, in different parts of it, 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 it shimmers and sends off um, different light depending on, on how, you, how you approach it. Yeah. And because you're approaching it from four different directions on a roundabout, um, I just think it adds to it. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Again, I might be a bit biased. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah, the, the copper colour um, just adds a different element over it. It, it kind of presents like, um, like the autumn colours of, of deciduous trees. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I quite like it. No, it's, it's a um, great way of putting it. And mm. I know I spoke to you about this the other week, but we've actually got some a similar meeting strip or roundabout with zoysia grass in it now in Victoria, uh, yep. which is really cool. Obviously, uh, grass goes dormant and loses colour, but the way you've described it then, I think it's going to come to fruition in colder climates as well where it's not a bad look, it's just a different look. Yeah, it's just a different look in it, you know, and, there's probably opportunities to have deciduous trees planted amongst it, depending on the um, depending on the landscape that you create. So you could actually make it work and and add it to the colour palette of, yeah. of what you're trying to create. And I noticed um, with roundabouts around here that a I'm not a tree person, but lamanders and such that they use to plant roundabouts out. Rubbish can be an issue uh, in these all mm-hmm. time. You see it get caught. What was your experience with rubbish on on the zoysia grass roundabout? Well, it was actually one of the things that that I distinctly remember um, being told when we did the, the turf, uh, the um, turf farm tour was mm. that it didn't hold, it didn't, it didn't bury rubbish like Kaikyu can mm-hmm. where, you know, if Kaikyu will actually grow over and envelop it and you can, you can lose a car diff yeah. in, in, yeah. in Kaikyu yeah. uh, only to find it again with a slasher. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, whereas this um, was described to me as that, the rubbish sat on top and made it easier for um, for us to, to actually pick. Yeah. Um, and I got asked when I did the last talk down here, um, what happened? To, what happened? Did it work? Mm. And I said, Oh, we don't have rubbish on there. I'm not not sure where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the reality is that yes, it's very easy to see. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get enveloped by the grass, and then we don't lose it. Yeah. So I think it would be a real advantage if if it was getting mowed every now and again mm-hmm. in a roadside setting where, you know, it isn't uncommon to get brake calipers and other bits and pieces yeah. in your grass that it actually sits up and you can see it you and, see and it. you can pick it before you mow or before you do any maintenance. And establishment of an area like this, it was always your grass establishment, we spoke about it again on this podcast before, it can be a finicky grass to establish. It needs mm-hmm. a lot of care. And on an area where you can't, probably easily get water to like a roundabout i'd imagine how did you how do you water this stuff to establishment in these public places what's the key there in the roundabout situation we we're fortunate to had water in okay. the roundabout yeah. so we um we put in an irrigation system and yeah. it, it paid dividends because um we didn't have to go out there and, and physically do it yeah so yeah it, um it is the only factor that I think it's not it's not a downside to it, but it's the thing that you really need to consider yeah. is that if you're not going to do that, 
hard yards of initial establishment, mm. then it's probably not going to reap the rewards that, that we talk about here. Yeah. Um, so we were really fortunate. We loaded it up with water in its establishment period over that first six weeks, um, got established really well, put down deep roots into the into the sand, and it hasn't looked back. Yeah. Um, we did have a situation over Christmas just gone where we did some um, ends to cul-de-sacs mm -hmm. and we got those hot days yeah. over Christmas. So we did get some burn mm -hmm. where – you know, it, it probably needed three waters a day and we're only giving it one. Yeah. Um, and But it's bounced back. It, yeah. it just amazes me how resilient it is. Um, so we had, we did have some complaints from residents going, well, what are you doing? Um, all the turf's gone brown. Yeah. Um, two months later, we're the ones smiling. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's back on track. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it is, it is really key, that early establishment yeah. is really key no, to getting the water on it. It's an um, important point and... Ongoing though, once it establishes a root system, it can survive in these situations without. Yeah, so we've irrigation. we've often turned the irrigation off. Yeah, uh, we've done another um, big medium strip outside the Civic Centre mm -hmm. in in um, on College Avenue at, at, at Shell Harbour. Yeah, and it didn't have irrigation, so we had to hand water that. Um, to get it established. Yeah, and it's doing really well. Yeah, um, it's got a lot more traffic because there's a car park opposite and people. Um, traverse across it, yeah. so there are, are worn patches yeah. um, where it just looks like a, a neat manicured lawn, yeah. and then you've got the, the areas where people aren't walking, where you've got the more sculptural elements of the long, yeah. long grass. So, and yeah. and the the urban island heat up effects are a real thing in our cities now, and, yeah. and we'll count the Shaw Harbour as a city, Albion Park as a city, because they're big areas, and all this built up massive concrete buildings, asphalt can create these areas, can turn quite hot and quite warm and quite uncomfortable places to be in summer what sort of what sort of role do you see zoysia grass playing in these areas um i suppose it's you can put grass in places that you've never been able to put grass before yeah i, I just think it it does obviously it's going to reduce that that heat sink yeah. um it's it's greenery and it is a habitat even though it's short grass and we sometimes think of habitat as being trees and yeah. trees and koalas mm -hmm. yeah. um but yeah it does provide habitat it, it does um help with that heat sinking mm -hmm. effect mm -hmm. um along with just the overall greening um greening of the city yeah uh, and areas that um in the past we've seen concrete go in um had i known about zoysia um there'd be a lot more um grass roundabouts yeah. than what we've got because there wasn't the easy um, low maintenance option at that time, yeah. and and we went in a different direction and, and concreted them. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, I know the other thing it would do with the obviously you know the season we've just had grass has grown like we've almost never seen it before. Particularly Kaikuyu, it's just it's a centimeter a day in mm. some spots. It's ridiculous. And I know council. I know our council down here. We're the next council south, uh, Shaven City Council, and they've got so much grassed area um, and. The number one thing you hear around is, oh, council haven't been back to mow here. And council could mow it every third day and it would still look untidy. Like it's just growing yeah, so, so quickly. True. So I guess what Zoysia can do is release that pressure valve a little bit for council too, where it mightn't be three years unmown like the roundabout, but like you said, it might be every three, six, nine months. Mm. I can imagine that would make a huge difference uh, to a, an organisation as big as a local council. Yeah, it's massive. So mm. the medium strip outside the Civic Centre was a Kaiku mown medium strip, okay. which was done between every three and six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's been in now and um, the calculations I did on it was initially 89% saving wow. in time. Yeah. Uh, and that that just increases as time goes on as it becomes less and less maintenance yep. um, as, as it establishes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got some other um, other plants in amongst it as well just to give it some contrast and yep. so we're using it more like a ground cover. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, we've effectively – don't have to mow anymore and, and we're doing more and more of those or oh, we um, yeah. council um, we're doing more and more and more of those um, yeah. in, in order to reduce reduce maintenance it's yeah. so good so it's actually reducing mowing altogether in some areas yeah and mm. it enables that focus to then shift uh, yes. to other areas and then, mm. and then keep them under attack with using the same obviously amount of staff and you can keep everything looking better so what do you see I guess you we caught up recently at the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show and I think you got a bit of time there to wander around and have a look at some of the show gardens and um, I'm not saying it's all down to Scotty King's always uh, but you've obviously had a big role in this you would have noticed a bulk of the show gardens 
at the Melbourne International Flower Garden Show actually using Unmown Zoysia as a feature now. Yeah, yeah. put a big smile to my face. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, yeah it's really interesting to see uh, the different um, designers and, and how they were using it anywhere from rooftop to um, – to, to other features within within the landscape, and mm. yeah, I just think it's got a um, got a real place in yeah. the landscape. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there has been other horticultural um, products in the past, like Mondo grass, that um, look great, but was still high maintenance, sort yeah. of for in between paving and and in um, tighter areas. Mm. Um, but ultimately, they got. Um, overgrown with weeds and, and it was it was a maintenance issue. Yeah. Um, whereas I just see um, Zoysia doesn't have that problem and, and has equally as good an architectural effect yeah. as, as some of the other um, horticulture products. The weed suppression is actually pretty impressive. Once it's amazing. It's, yeah, once, yeah. It's, um, once it's established, of course. From day one because of how it comes as a, as a turf product is, yeah. is a really yeah. um, thick um, ground cover in and of itself. Yeah. And then once it gets established, it yeah, I, I was told about how good it was, mm. um, but I really wanted to put it to the test. Going, are these guys just giving yeah. me a marketing yeah. a spin here or yeah. what? And yeah. and it really is every bit of, mm. of what it's promoted mm. to be yeah. in terms of weed suppression. Yeah. It's fantastic. But yeah, Melbourne Flower and Garden Show just blew my mind with yeah. how how much it was is being used. Um, I think, and, I and think how effective it looked in the in the landscape yeah. amongst I, other plants. I think without you know, wanting in your pocket. I think a lot of that actually comes back to the story of Shell Harbour City Council and that roundabout and how that's looked and how that's saved council money and how it showed that you don't have to cut this stuff once a week. You can really let it go and it looks good. But being a slow-growing grass, it's not that suitable for, for high traffic areas like sports fields and thoroughfares and parks and that sort of stuff. So you've had a bit of experience with other products uh, that council have used and I'm, I'm not sure, obviously... It's a Lawn Solutions podcast, so we're going to talk about Lawn Solutions products. But Tiff Tuff's been a bit of a changer there for you, not just at council, but also personally uh, for some other stuff you do up at your place. Yeah, so in the sports field setting, um, excuse the pun, but it's been a game changer. Yeah. Uh, we used to have an annual program of, uh, of goldmouth refurbishments. Mm-hmm. Uh, high wear areas, not only in goldmouths, but high wear areas across, across sports fields. Yeah. And when we started using Tiff Tough as the as the replacement for those high wear areas, we found we weren't having to replace it every year. Mm-hmm. So um, not so good for a, um, a turf farm no. because the sales <laughs> uh, and, and, and not as strong. Yeah. <laughs> However, for for the community, it was a, a great win in that we had a really strong turf grass mm-hmm. for those high wear areas and the recovery rate um, from from the winter sports in, into spring and summer uh, meant less maintenance for us also. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that was replacing kike mainly yes, in your setting, yeah, was it? replacing yeah. kike with, with Tiff Tough. With Tiff in, Tough. In any high wear areas, so whether that's the centre or whether it was goal mouths. Yeah. Uh, we even started using it in high traffic areas, um, like outside toilet blocks. Um, okay. The Shell Harbour Ocean Pool was one of them. Yeah. Uh, the area between the pool and the toilet block that was – continually getting worn out, we, we put Tiff Tuff in, in there and yeah. um, got great results too. So It's kind of the other end of the spectrum to Zoysia grass, isn't it? Like it's it's Zoysia's slow, I guess you call attractive. it architectural, attractive, <laughs> attractive architectural. <laughs> Tiff Tuff's more of the, I guess, the rough and ready product, but it shows there's a situation for both mm. um, in an area like the council. And I know um, even personally at your place, uh, you had a little project there that gets quite a bit of wear and tear and it, it seemed to stand up to that as well. Yeah, I... Um, yeah, um, our family breed dogs, and mm. so we set up a four hundred square meter dog run, mm. um, and it, it had its challenges as well. It, it faced south um, with a big shed on the on the north side of it, so shade was an issue. Yeah, uh, for the winter parts of the year, and you know, having having a lot of dogs running on it daily worried me as as to how we would provide a product that, that would work. And yeah. it's been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't. Except for the the odd dog that tries to look like a wombat, um, <laughs> it's it's worn really well, yeah. uh, particularly along the fence line where the dogs like to run all the time. Yeah, uh, it has been unbelievable. Yeah, like, yeah. like it, it hasn't worn out, but it has worn down. Yeah, and sure. it's uh, great great to see the results there. Yeah. And you know, it adds to our product. 
yeah. due because we've always got a good lawn to present mm-hmm. as as the dog run area for mm-hmm. um, for customers when they come and see the facilities that we've got. Yeah. So it's been been amazing in that situation. Yeah, and I sure know. I've um, been out there a couple of times, and I get a shock every time. Um, not just because of where it is and the water it copped initially too. Remember mm-hmm. all, the, all the water that went on it, but the shade aspect of it. Now I'm not saying. Tiff Tuff's a shade tolerant turf Friday. We'll leave that to the to the buffaloes of the world. But it, it's kind of surprising, uh, being south facing, that it actually stood up to a bit of shade from that shed, and I think it still is. I'm still guessing. does, yeah. yeah. It stands it stands out well. It it performs a little differently as you'd expect. Any mm. any any plant in the shade obviously has extended growth. Yeah. So it's not not nearly as tight. Mm. But it still provides a really effective ground cover for us, yeah. and uh, I'm just conscious of how it gets mowed in that area to to help help it in that situation. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's amazing how well it's done. If that had been Kaikuyu, uh, I would have had mud. Yeah. Because yeah. as you mentioned, the rain mm. 2022, uh, we got four and a half meters of rain yeah. <laughs> uh, in 12 months from yeah. November to November. Yeah. Uh, and that area was continuously getting inundated with water mm. and it only had one 100 mil ag line um, doing the job there. Yep. Um, it certainly wasn't set up like some of the sports fields yeah, I've, sure. I've helped deliver. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, however, yeah, within a day or two, the water had got away and it just really performed well in those wet, shaded situations yep. even yeah, yeah. To, to maintain cover the, the entire time. you obviously done a lot. Um in your work career and left what I would call a pretty impressive legacy um, at Shell Harbour City Council. I mean, I don't think everyone that leaves gets a crown. No, not everyone's got a Joysia crown, yeah. have they? <laughs> crown it might become a thing now, but you know, I've but, got the first one, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> What's the future going to hold for you on a personal note? Because I know I still don't work out how you do the things that you do in the time that you have outside of work. It, it's pretty impressive. So. What's going to be the future for you on a on a personal note now um, that you've left council and um, you got all these wonderful, weird, wacky projects going on up at the ranch? <laughs> I don't know how it's going to look. I guess um, I'm keen to to be doing the propagation yeah. um, and to be helping the industry in that sense in a small way behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, keen to see what else um, there might be in in the zoysia world as well. I don't think there is a limit when it comes to you and thinking about zoysia grass. Well, I don't think there's a limit when it comes to zoysia. Yeah. Um, and it, it won't just be me. Um, yeah. And the, the Melbourne Flower and Garden Show was a great example of that where yeah. people are just thinking outside the square um, or outside the square turf really yeah. and, and looking at other other uses for it. And it, it just excites me because, like I said on the first time I saw it, it was, oh, you know, I've been in the industry 33 years and mm. I saw that and went, that is – revolutionary that is this is something yeah, cool. amazing i guess um watch this space um, yeah. it has some conversations about how this could potentially look um as a product in sort of two three four five ten years whatever mm. it may be so um we'll see where that takes us but it's been a it's been an interesting journey and it's a, a credit to you and and your team and the work that you've done i i guess you've changed the game uh, when it comes to turf grass in in certain situations and you've got the crown to to show Got the, the crown there. Got the crown. But like I said in my um, in my farewell speech, um, it's 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 never a, um, an individual effort, mm-hmm. and um, I was fortunate enough to have management around me that supported the crazy idea in the first place. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was fortunate enough to have staff around me, um, a tradesman that took it on and and took all our apprentices to the job and used it as a training exercise for yeah, them, right. yeah. um, and they have been able to watch the progress of that. Yeah. you know, pretty much through the time of their apprenticeship. So some of them were first-year apprentices on that day and, and now third-year apprentices watching that roundabout and watching, yeah. watching it grow. So it, it always takes a team. It's never um, – and, you know, you guys with your support um, and knowledge behind it as well, mm-hmm. helping us along the way yeah. um, in order to make it a success as well. So yeah. it's, it's a really big collaboration of people. It's just um, – yeah, you just got to have someone that, that drives it. But, yeah. Yeah. It's a great chat and I'm sure people in from all walks of off the turf world will enjoy that and um, hopefully they check out and see what it can do and it might provide a solution for them. But um, it's good to chat, Scott, and we, yeah, um, thank we, you. we appreciate all the work you're doing. We appreciate you coming on and, and telling your story. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you.